Maybe the line sensor is one of the more um, complicated uh, sensors that we have on board, so it requires a little bit of uh, attention. I can show you how the, the line sensor looks. It looks like this. It has got a number of uh, a number of LEDs on the other side here, and um, on this side there's a number of sensors covered a bit in in plastic. Um, but you can see it reflects a little bit, um, and they are fairly sensitive. On the other side of the board, there is some electronics, some SMD electronics in circuit diagram. So we have got it here. These are the LEDs. And there's altogether nine LEDs in um, in this uh, row. And between those nine LEDs, there is eight sensors. This is one of the sensors, sensor number one. And there is uh, two transistors that uh, filter and amplify um, the, what this one is, uh, is seeing. Um, the LEDs are driven by also a transistor, a constant current generator. And uh, the gate of this uh, N MOSFET is driven directly by the port on on the on the microprocessor, and there's a high and a low level. And uh, if it's driven by directly, then this one changes to between zero and three point three volts. If we're using the low pin instead, then it goes through a resistor, and there's another resistor here, so we get a little lower value on the gate. That means lower value on the source and lower current in the diodes. Um, there's a little unfortunate thing is that the blue LEDs take up a lot of um, voltage, so they need about three voltage each. Uh, that means nine voltage. The gate voltage was also 3.3 volt. That means above 12 volt altogether, and we only have a battery um, that goes down to about 10 volts. And um, even though that the drain up here with the diodes can get lower than the gate voltage without any problem, um, there, there, there is this uh, unfortunate effect that the, cur the current in the diodes will, will decrease if the voltage is below something like 10.7, um, 10.8 uh, volts. <clears throat> so that can be an issue. Um, the sensor circuit it doesn't matter, it's on its own um, on its own voltage source and the, and the diodes are, are flashing. They are turned on half a millisecond and turned off half a millisecond and the difference, and it's measured, the voltage is measured uh, both while it's on and while it's off and the difference between those two, that's uh, the reflected, what's reflected from the background and the more reflected, the higher the higher difference, and that's what we use. And down here is the PCB and uh, the circuit here, that's this small group of components, let's do that. And the output is a wire that goes to this plug connected to the microprocessor. Yeah, with a cable, and there's another cable, and that's the one that controls the, the LEDs. Yeah, that's uh, about the circuit. Now we are going to use it. <clears throat> we can see um, the return values from all the sensors. We've got those here. Um, and we can see sensor number one is the lowest one, and it has got a value of 1950-ish. And the highest one is about just about 3500. The AD converter uh, has got um, 12 bits. That means the highest value is 4000 and... Uh, 100 ish, 4096. Um, and that means this is about the highest it gets uh, before we get in saturation in the AD converter. We could also, if I press edit and say high power uh, and apply, then you can see the values increase, but not really as much as we would expect because this is the difference between, um, no, actually, this is the value. But it seems like there's a little bit of saturation. Now these two values are about the same, uh, which they didn't were before. 
which means that uh, this is probably a more true, realistic, unsaturated uh, value. So um, we can use high power, but maybe we should avoid using that <coughs> with, uh, so that the sensor is not saturated. If the sensor is further away from the, from the ground, then uh, it's more appropriate to use high power. But we, use the, we don't use high power, that means low power. 